What's up, Tiger fans? Welcome back to the Streak Speak here for episode three of season two. And we got our guy Nick Timberlake on talking to us today about his career, his upbringing, his passion for Towson University. Nick, thank you for joining us. Thank you for having me. Yeah, absolutely. We'll start with your career coming to Towson. You kind of grew up in Massachusetts and, uh, and your path down here. What did that look like? What was the recruiting process? How did you kind of end up as being one of Scary's guys? Uh, yeah, so, I mean, I'm from Boston. Scary's from Boston, so yeah. that's kind of the connection how he found me um i mean my dad coached with coach clark at uh, gw for a little bit okay. so that kind of helped in the recruiting process my dad made a couple phone calls and scary finally came up to see a game but um in high school played for my public high school brain tree yeah um did pretty well there for four years thought about leaving a couple times to go prep just for better competition but uh stuck it out and then finally went prep uh did a postgrad year yeah okay because at the high school, I didn't even have a D2 yeah. offer. So, uh, I mean, that kind of not really killed my confidence, but it was kind of depressing not to have anything right. in high school. But I'm very happy with the road I took. Yeah, yeah, and you kind of grew up in Massachusetts, like you said. And a big goal for a lot of guys is in our sport, at least, is to go south. Mm -hmm. Do you view Maryland as being south? Yeah. Yes. Okay. Because yeah, because a, a lot of guys like I don't I don't really but I guess technically it kind of is. And then you you know you get here and you have your your career which we'll go into. But what has kept you here for all five years? Because Scary likes to talk a lot about the the portal as he says the, mm -hmm. the, the transfer portal. Yeah. And what has kept you out of the portal and staying here and kind and kind of seeing your time through? Um. I mean, if you again if you would have told me my freshman year that I was here for five years, I wouldn't thought I wouldn't believe you yeah. at all. Um, I mean, I redshirted my first year, so I knew I had that extra year. Right. And uh, I really thought I would graduate here and be somewhere else. But, um, I mean, he brought in a bunch of new guys last yeah. year, and we ended up coming up short. So that kind of motivated me to right. stay another year. And then he brought in Nigel Say and uh, Conway. So I saw that we were reloading and um, knew what I could do, yeah. knew that I'd have a lot of freedom, which... If I went somewhere else, I don't know if I would have that right away. And knowing that I had that, it kind of kind of helped me yeah. stay here and not get in the portal. Right. And you have that process that you're talking about, the redshirt freshman year. You, you go from that to sixth man of the year. You got a COVID year in there, and then you end up being a first-team All-CAA. So you have this, this five-year kind of schedule um, of just the process and the grind. And a lot of guys nowadays can't handle that. They run from that, right? So what did you learn through going all that stuff and, and taking that route and kind of being the guy and seeing that through? What was that like? Uh, I mean, that's what Bill Belichick talks about all yeah. the time, just doing your job. And uh, the minute I got here, I just grinded it out. Um, fortunately, got hurt, but I mean, I was starting as a freshman. Right. I started against the uh, national champion UVA team, with yeah. Kyle Guy, Ty Jerome, my first game, and it didn't feel real. And then uh, four games later, I got hurt and sure. ended the season, but then came off the bench my second year and I just feel like I've gotten better every single year. Yeah, and you've obviously made so many memories you know, through that process and so many relationships. Kind of talk about your different teammates throughout all those years, kind of on the court first, and then we'll obviously get it, get it off the court. But mm -hmm. on the court, kind of what have those guys meant to you? Who are the, some impactful guys that you've that you've played with and bonded with? Uh, I mean, my first two years here, uh, my roommates were Dennis Tunstall, who's in Slovenia, I think. Nikai <laughs> um, Sanders, who is just in Portugal. And Brian Fobbs, he's in Germany right now. So, I mean, all my roommates have been pros. Yeah. So, hopefully, I'm, I'm the next one. But, uh, no, those guys, they've been awesome to me. Yeah. Um, I'm really close with Nakai. Uh, we probably talk a couple times a month, just seeing what we're doing, what's up. Um, and then Ja'Kai Dotton, he's not here anymore, but I came in with him. He's a close friend of mine sure. from Boston. Um, basically, all my teammates, whether we're – talking all the time when we're not talking i mean if i see someone we're gonna we're gonna be cool yeah yeah and your roommates which has kind of evolved over the last couple of years like you talked about the stories that you guys have and, and the things that you guys have done from prank wars to losing cars to figuring all out what's the best story or two that you have from from all your guys off the court uh well the the car one the star was hilarious uh it was this year um cam just Came home and just didn't know where he parked his car. Like, he just completely forgot after practice. We went back, got lunch, and he thought his car was missing. So, for like five or six hours, he's panicking, trying to figure out where his car is. It's not in uh, UV, it's not up here. 
and he's trying to figure out and he finally went back down to uh, West Village and he parked at the West Village uh, garage <laughs> so we could get food. And he really thought someone stole his car. I mean, we, we you guys had like a like an alert almost out. Like oh, yeah. Everyone was looking for that car. Yeah, he uh, he was posting everywhere. Like, if you see this <laughs> car, like, please please tell me, alert someone. And then uh, going off what you said with the prank wars, right before COVID happened, it was it was scary. You had to check your back at all times. Um, rooms were messed up, glitter bombs. It was it was a whole lot. Yeah, yeah, uh, and. Those guys, those moments obviously kind of impact the culture shift that, you, that you've seen here and, and that Scary's kind of had through his whole career. Um, what are the biggest aspects from your perspective about changing the culture and kind of how Towson basketball is viewed on a, on a national level and, and being a key part of that? Yeah, I mean, when I came in, uh, the season before, they had a really good year and then a bunch of guys transferred. And thank God, because I wouldn't be here if they didn't. Yeah. Um, and then my freshman year, we weren't really that good. But the year after, we finished third and lost in the quarterfinals of the uh, tournament. But just I wanted to come in, change something. I wanted to do something that's never been done before. Mm -hmm. And I've already accomplished one of those yep. with regular season championship. And we're still hunting for the uh, yeah. for the March Madness bid. Yeah, and, and in that hunt, too, you have your own personal goals and motives. And I know you're a huge chip on the shoulder guy. And you probably have a laundry list of things just as I do, just as most of us do. Mm -hmm. Kind of go into to what those motivations are and, and what they've built up as and the, the things that kind of motivate you day in and day out that stay with you through everything that you do. Yeah, um, I feel like I've always been overlooked as yeah. a player. Um, never really got the opportunities that I wanted, but... I've outworked a lot of people and I've made it a lot further than some of the people when we were younger yeah. who were these so-called top prospects. Yeah. Now it's all coming together for me and getting the recognition that I feel like I finally deserve. Yeah, yeah. and there's a point where you reach too where you kind of hit those goals and you hit those motives and everything else is icing on the cake, right? And mm -hmm. and that's a lot of what this is, just kind of enjoying this first and obviously you know, with your family and friends, which I want to get into that too. Your dad played, you're close with your sister, your mom's obviously a huge influence, but what does your relationship with your family mean to you and kind of how do you carry that with you throughout everything you do as well? Yeah, it means the world to me. I mean, my dad put a ball in my hand at a very young age. Um, my mom's from a hockey family, so yeah. I played both growing up and then she was she was kind of torn at the end when I uh, picked basketball. But <laughs> looking back at it, I think she's, she's very happy with what I've done. And um, just the whole aspect of me and my sister being so competitive with yeah. one another, we just make each other better every single day. And my dad's probably the hardest person on me. Right. I would think it would probably be scary, <laughs> but no, my dad is, he's worse. He, uh, I'll have a good game and he won't tell me I have a good game yeah. until we finish our phone call or if he's here, he'll finally say it after like an hour talking to me, but I wouldn't trade him for the world. Yeah, your dad in his prime, you in your prime, first of 21, ones and twos. Not even close. Maybe. You got it? Not all right. even close. All right, that's good. And you got all your boys back home too, which which I, I pride myself in having the same balancing those relationships. Talk about balancing basketball and life and kind of those guys and all that all that influence that it, that it has on your life. Yeah, I mean, all my friends right now are uh, working nine to five. So yeah. A couple of them came down uh, two weekends ago, so they got to feel what the college life was like again. But um, <laughs> no, balancing them, they're, they're the best. They're support me through everything sure um yeah they root for me every single day uh they want to see me succeed and obviously i want to see see them succeed sure as well. sure and your biggest hobbies off the court um i'm a big big golfer in the yeah. off season love golf um and then just hanging around doing nothing basically you kind of got baited into, into the golf question we got tipped off before this obviously yep. talk about your putter uh so my <laughs> uncle when i was uh I don't even know how old I was really, but when I was playing hockey, he uh, found this crazy website called HockeySickPutters.com. Yeah. And I haven't changed my putter since. <laughs> it's a legit hockey stick that I put like a hockey player. Yeah. And I floated this out to you before, and you know, a little one v one competition. You've come back to me and said, "Let me take batting practice on the field." So, I've kind of been kicking this around and kind of trying to figure it out. If we did a, if we did a cumulative. Three point contest, home run derby, mashup. Maybe get some other sports involved too. Who you got, me or you? I, I might let you hit from second base, but I'm staying true to your three point line. Me hit from second base? If, if you need to. Oh, that's that's crazy. <laughs> um, 
I don't know. I feel like we'd probably split, but I get a couple home runs in. I feel like. All right, all right. If you it, if you believe in it like that, <laughs> it, it's tough in the spring. The wind's got to be blowing out for you. But our, our last question, as uh, as you know, what have you done today to make Towson Athletics a better place than it was yesterday? Um, I just feel like since I've came in here, the culture of the basketball team has changed. Sure. Um, people like being around us. People. Yep support cast from other athletes whether we're going to your games yep, yep. or you guys are coming to us um i just feel like the whole aspect of Towson basketball has changed yeah. since i've been here yeah and it's, it's super impactful you can definitely see it and you heard it from nick come support them they'll come support you buy tickets for the rest of their season as they kind of head into march and hopefully get that march madness bid check out towson for more details nick thanks for coming on and we'll see you guys soon go tigers